the systematic and expository study of the Bible at the Deeper Life Bible Church offers you an enriching steady spiritual growth, thus opening your eyes to God's own way of righteousness. In this case, you will have the opportunity to listen to one such enriching Bible study. So, prepare your hearts to be blessed. Let us pray. Our God and our Father, we thank you for this day. That today again you open our spiritual eyesight so we can see wondrous things out of your word in Jesus' name. We believe you have answered our prayer. In Jesus' name we pray. In Matthew chapter 7, we want to read from verse 13 and verse 14. Enter ye in at the straight gate, for wide is the gate, and broad is the way, that leadeth to destruction, and many there be which go in thereat, because straight is the gate, and narrow is the way, which leadeth to life, and few there be that find it. Here the Lord Jesus Christ made a public proclamation on what it takes to get to the kingdom of God and what it takes to live with God eternally in heaven. And there he tells us the responsibility of everyone that ever hopes to live with God in heaven. And there are two things that we need to understand and need to notice in what Jesus said. Number one, he spoke about the gate which we ought to enter in. Number two, he spoke about the way, the way of life, the narrow way that a believer will walk in. Very clearly, therefore, he's telling us that the believer's life is likened to a race or a journey or a pilgrimage. Repentance from all sins with faith in Christ will grant us entry through that narrow gate. But then repenting and believing on the Lord Jesus Christ is not the total sum of the Christian life. We enter through the gate so we can walk in the way. And it is the walking in the way that eventually leads us to our destination. At the beginning of the Christian life, we enter through that gate and then we make a commitment to the Lord. But that in his grace and through his strength, we're going to walk in the way of the Lord all the days of our lives. That means then that the Christian life is not a passive life. It is a life of actively following the Lord. Walking in the light and in the truth of the word of God. By the grace that he has bestowed upon us. 
Today we are going to talk about the work of believers. That's talking about the behavior and the conduct of believers that hope to live with God in heaven. You see what the Bible has to say about the Christian work. We'll see what warning that God is giving us about the Gentile work. And we will look at the inspired decision that the Lord is calling every one of us if we hope to have eternal fellowship with the Lord. Number one, the Christian walk. If you say you have become a Christian, you have turned away from your sin. You are now a believer in the Lord Jesus Christ. You have the witness of the Holy Spirit within you that you are a child of God. How should you live? How should you walk in your life? By what principles or precepts must be must you be ruling your life? Romans chapter six, verse four. Romans chapter six, verse four. Romans chapter 6, verse 4. Therefore, we are buried with him by baptism into death, that like as Christ was buried, was raised up from the dead by the glory of the Father. Even so, we also should walk in newness of life. As the Bible is talking about death, so it's talking about life. As the Bible portrays between us, uh, before us the burial of Christ, so it portrays before us the resurrection of Christ. And it brings the whole illustration upon the believer. And he tells the believer that there must be death and burial before resurrection and before the newness of life. There are many people that call themselves Christians that have never experienced the death of Christ. If you have become a Christian, there were some things that were lively and living within you before. The moment you become a Christian, all those things will die. All the germs that you derive from the devil, all the corrupting influences that you derive from the world, immediately you become a Christian, you identify with Christ on the cross and you identify with Christ that was buried. All those things will die in your life. The things that are the life of the world and the life of Satan motivating you, activating you and pushing you before you became a Christian. Immediately you become a Christian, there will be a death blow upon all those things in your life. Fact, the Bible is talking about the death of the self-life. The death of the opinion of self. The death of all the things that had been in your life before which was contrary to the will of God. And it says that we are buried with him by baptism into death. The baptism that you go through which is the water baptism is only an outward symbol to signify to the world and the people that are watching you 
this man has died, this woman has died. Any life he lives now is not going to be the old life, it's going to be the new life, the resurrection life. Baptism what he's saying is that like as Christ was raised up from the dead even so ye should walk in the newness of life it is telling you that the difference there was in the life of Jesus before death and after resurrection, that should be the difference in your new life now. You can see that before the death of Jesus Christ, if the door was closed, it had to be opened before you will enter in. Before Jesus died, if he had to go from Jericho to Jerusalem, he had to go walking. It will take him a long time before getting there. Before Jesus Christ died, before he was crucified on the cross of Calvary, if he needed to go to Lazarus to raise Lazarus up, it had to take him a number of days before getting there. But after he rose from the dead, there was a remarkable difference. As the disciples were closing the door, he entered in. That's the remarkable difference. As Mary was about to hold him, he said, Don't hold me yet, I'm going to the father and your father. He went, and that evening he came back. That's the remarkable difference. Said, like as Christ was raised up from the dead, even so we should walk in newness of life. There should be a remarkable difference between the life you live now and the life you were living before. A, a remarkable difference that can be seen by everybody. The old must die and be buried, and the new must be manifested. In John chapter 8, verse 12. John chapter 8, verse 12. Then spake Jesus again unto them, saying, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. Jesus is to so for what pay a mini malia ye and it's your better milay kiyor in your nino koko so by your ni malay ye the Pharisees had been giving some artificial lie to the Jews to the Israelites before Jesus came our Pharisee what if he imagine I had a rufa I want you go to the pages today like we have a lot of people that can make some artificial light but it's not as strong as bright as the sun there are people that can give you some principles of living that are not as bright as the life of Christ. But here Jesus said, I am the light of the world. I am the perfect example for the world. I am the express image of the Father for you to see the beauty of the glory of God. I am the one that comes to demonstrate the truth of God and the word of God. Every detail of my life is to show you the way as the sun shows you the light. He said he that followeth me shall not walk in darkness but shall 
shall have the light of life. So it is telling us then that when you have become a Christian, you will walk uprightly. You will not be stumbling, falling, and rising every day. You see, there are people that are walking in darkness. Whatever they do, you challenge them. They say, oh, I didn't know that is bad. Whenever they stumble, you say, You are stumbling too much. I didn't know that table was there. Whenever they are looking for something they don't find, they do say, Why don't you turn on the light? Well, I don't know where the light is. But when there is a bright, shining light, and there is no darkness around you at all, there will be no behavior, there will be no character or conduct you are trying to hide. Everything is in the plain light of the Word of God. It is only when you are in darkness, you are doing some things under cover. I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness. Begin to think about the things that people do in darkness. When people want to give bribe, they cannot do it in the open while there is light. When prostitutes want to go into their business, they do not do it in the open light, they have to go into the Dark. When robbers want to steal, they cannot do it while all eyes are open and they are watching them in the light. They have to seek cover under darkness. When people want to go and worship idol, they cannot do it right in the open while everybody is, wa is watching them. I mean, the religious people who are pretending, they have to seek the cover of darkness. But Jesus said, if you're a real believer, everything you do, you do in the light of the word of God. And whatever will not bear the light or stand to the light, you will not do if you're a real believer. Check up your life. There are things to do undercover. Are there things to do and say they must not hear that one? Are there things to do that before you do it, you look right, you look clear to see is there any believer around here? Are there jokes to tell? Are there things to say that before you tell the jokes to say, is a pastor around? Is there anybody that will see me around? Are there some things you utter from your mouth and after see somebody you close your mouth with your hands say I didn't know that that fellow is around. If you're a real believer, there is nothing you'll be doing undercover in darkness. You will do everything in the light of the word of God. You'll be walking in the light and walking in the truth. Colossians chapter 2. Reading from verse as ye have received, as therefore received Christ Jesus the Lord, so walk ye in him. You see some people that will say, I've received Jesus as my Lord and Savior. But they are not walking in Christ. But it says, if you have therefore received Jesus Christ as your Lord, as your controller, as a ruler over your life, walk to show that you are now a child of God. Rooted and built up in him and established in the faith, as ye have been taught, as ye have been taught, abounding therein with thanksgiving. 
Kiasi fiasi mule ni mi bagbo yin gege bi ati ko yin gege bi ati ko yin ki esi ma ko ni no re pelu idu pe Immediately somebody becomes a real child of God he must be exposed to the teaching of the word of God I guarantee ni aba ti di omo Olorun be ni a fi e ko ro Olorun ma ye And everywhere you go people will ask you can you do this for me or can you do this for yourself you will go back and check up what was I taught and you will say I'm sorry I cannot do that because that is not the way I was taught or, I'm sorry I cannot do that because that is not according to the Bible I am sorry I cannot do that that is not the teaching of the Bible as ye have been taught which means that as you go to your place of work and they are telling you that you will have to do this if it is not according to the word of god oh you say i'm sorry i'm a new creature now it is not as i have been taught you are planning your marriage or you have married already and your in-laws they bring suggestion upon suggestion you compare it with the word of god you say i'm sorry i cannot do all that you are suggesting to me it is not as i have been taught you're looking for work and somebody is bringing suggestions and said ah in this uh, time of austerity if you are looking for work this is how to go about it this is how to go about it if you will give some bribe if you will see the manager if you will give your body as an offering for him to be able to have sinful pleasure with you then job will come oh you say i'm sorry i'm a new i'm a new believer now i'm a child of god it is not as i have been taught <laughs> You have been married and there has not been any child after a long a non, a number of years. And some people say, ah, even if you are not going to do juju medicine, we have some prophets at the bar beach, and we have some other people, they are not going to do juju for you. And whatever they do, they are not going to tell you to kill anybody. They are trying to take care of you. And they are trying to do something for you so you can have a child. And the thing they are saying is not depending upon the Lord. It is not that they tell you to pray in the name of Jesus alone. They say you can drink some kind of water. They say you can drink oil. They say you can go to the bar beach and do this. Ah, you say, I'm sorry. I'm now a child of God. I will not because of having a child or wanting a child. Go to hellfire. It is not as I have been taught. <laughs> It may be that you are a believer, but you made a wrong step in your life. You did something wrong in the church, and you were disciplined according to the word of God. And while you are still under the burden of that discipline, some backsliders in other churches or some other uh, church goers from other denominations, uh, they tell you that uh, in our church they don't discipline anybody. You can do whatever you like, you can have girlfriend, you can steal money, you can do whatever. In our church they will never discipline you. Come to our church immediately, you will be a worker, you will be a, you will be a minister, you will say, I'm sorry, it is not because of work, I'm serving the Lord, I did something wrong, I'm still under punishment and chastisement from the church in which I belong and it is not because um, you know I uh, see you or I don't see you I know that the church ought to discipline a person the what I've been taught is that when somebody goes wrong it should be corrected I'm going to stay until the discipline is lifted that's how to live as a Christian 
nda ti o wa la be idajo abi ibawi ti a ba wi yi o sese ko ri awon apen da kan tabi awon ti won o fese mule na oro olorun kan ninu ijo kan ki won kan wa ba ki won pe o wa so fun pe ah o si ma bo ninu ijo ti wa ninu ijo ti wa won o mo gbogbole kokoko be yen be won o ki ba yen wi o le ni ore abani dese o le ma mu ti ko ma mu siga sugbe e wo gege bi omo olorun to mo to gba o ni wa so fun eni be pe mo toro ga farahun ko ni le seru nkan be tori pe o nti a fi ko mi ninu oro olorun ni pe ngba ti eyan ba se to lodi ki a ba ru eni be we nitori ti mo se to lodi oni won se ba ni won mo wa la be ba wi na titi ti a fi mu iba wi na kuro tori pe o ti a ro olorun fi ko mi ni eleyi yeah woman you are coming to the church and you say you are born again yeah, but your husband is still a reckless fellow outside christ outside the kingdom of god is still totally in the world iwa je obirin o si so ko ti di atobi o wa ninu ijo olorun sugbon oko re o je ti ki bi kita to wa na aye to nje fa je se ka kiri and your husband is telling you ah if you are going to go along with me i don't mind already you say you are going to church all right but you must go to the nice club with me you must do this with me and when my friends come you must bring all the beer you must do uh, you must do everything i want you to do you say my husband i'm very sorry i like to obey you but now because of christ living in me and the word of god i have learned what you are telling me is is not as i have been taught oko re ti o si je ala igbagbo ti o nje fa je ese ninu aye yi o wa so fun pe o wo bi kita lati le toju re be si ni o nfe ki o wa bo nka lo si bi jo si bi aye ye ati pe ngba ti awon alejo ba wa awon wa sinu le awon ti bi a e to wa ninu fridge won fe pe ki o ma fi se won alejo sugbon e wo gege bi omo olorun arabirin bo le je pe pelu ire re ni wa so wa so fun pe oko mi mo toro ga farao nko ni le se gbogbo nkan ti eni ki ma se tori pe a o fi oro olorun ko mi be or the in laws come to pressure is your life and say well are you do you think that your husband will stay like this okay your husband is going to marry second wife and if you really want peace in this family you must sign paper and you must give your agreement to it give your voice to it that you are not against the second wife coming in you will treat her as you know your equal and you are going to accept this second wife you say i'm sorry the word of god says one man one wife I cannot put my voice or my hand in something that is not according to the word of God. It is not as I have been taught. Boya awon alagbagbo wa to e wa won so fun e pe to ba nfi alaafia ninu mole bi re. Iyan ni pe oko ore o le wa bayi ko kan wa be. Tori na yo lo fe yawo keji. Sugbon to ba nfi alaafia o fowo si wi ade o pe nigbati yawo keji ba de e e dijo wa ni so kan e dijo wa fe ra ra yin. sugbe wo gege bi omo olorun o da iru awon eniyan be lohun pe oro olorun so pe oko kan aya kan ni won gba to si je pe oro olorun ta fi ko mi yi oni mo lati duro lo lori tori na mo lati se gege bi oro olorun ta fi ko mi you see this is a christian work eleyi ni rin christian ni it must be according to the word of god o lati je gege bi oro olorun and it doesn't matter how many years you become a christian or a believer ko si ni se pelu iye odun to si je o ni gbagbo the lord is still expecting you will walk as we have been taught in the word of god Genesis chapter 17 verse 1. And when Abraham was 90 years and 9 90 years old and 9 the Lord appeared to Abraham and said unto him I am the almighty God walk before me and be thou perfect. Oluwa fara Abraham o si wi fun pe emi ni Olorun Olodumare ma rin niwaju mi ki iwo ki o si pe o se 99 year old man eleyi ni agbalagba ti o ti to eni ogo oro Olorun I want you to picture in your mind 99 year old man o si fe ki o wo ki o foju nu wo ninu okan re en to si pe omo odun all the air is already white bo bo ri ori re lo ti di fufu perhaps he was bending down a little because of age o se se ko ti e je pe eyin re te ba di eni tori ojo ogo he be using a walking stick because of age le ma fi opasiketa ese nitori ojo ogo and yet for this old 99 year old man god said walk before me and be thou perfect si be si be eni ti o je omo odun moko de logorun yi olorun si so fun pe ki o ma rin niwaju un ki o si pe sometimes to see a 65 year old man who says i am a believer igba mi o le ri agbalagba kan to je pe omo odun marun o di ni adorin ni ti o so pe oni gbagbo lo as you get to his house is taking hot drink ngba ti o ba si de le re o si mu oti gbona ah you say papa you are born again 
Oh, so so baba, I am born again. Uh, only but you know, I'm an old man. So, me, baba, like, you me. young people, you should not drink. But we old people, the standard by which we live must be different. As you find a 70 year old man, and, and, um, around the house, they are having merriment and drinking and dancing and drumming. And Papa will bring a flowing gown and be going around with them. You say, Papa, we thought you said you were born again. Ah, I am born again. Ah, but you see, you young people, you are the people that cannot drink and dance. But we old people, we old people, as we are old now, we cannot commit adultery, we cannot commit fornication. You young people, because your body is fresh, if you do what I'm doing now, you will fall. But for old people, there is no Bible, there is no standard, there is no holiness. We can drink and dance and do whatever we like. After all, we shall soon die and go to heaven. Papa, if you want to go to heaven, walk before God and be that perfect. Baba, the master we pray, and your door, say, I pray, and you say, I eat in your silo, as you get, and see, I like, but I can't, and the master we roll out as you get, but I buy, so I buy, but I buy, and on top, I let you, and also the car at your mother, so I want to suffer, but I want to buy, 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 but I want after 24 years of working with the Lord, there were still some little, little things that God did not approve in his life. Some people will stop coming to the Bible study because they say, you know, I believe for the Lord now for eight years. They say for 24 years I've been born again. After 24 years, God was still talking to Abraham, and he was talking about righteousness and holiness and purity. Abraham walked before me and be thou perfect. Till you get to the very grave. Till you are leaving this world. You must be exposing your life and your heart to the word of God every day to see if there is any imperfection in your life. And what, what the Lord is expecting from you and from me is that we'll walk before the Lord perfectly. Isaiah chapter 35. Reading from verse 8 to verse 10. And highway shall be there, and a way, and it shall be called way of holiness. The unclean shall not pass over it. But it shall be for those, the wayfaring men, do fools, they shall not hear therein. No lion shall be there, nor any ravenous beast shall go up thereon. It shall not be found there, but the redeemed shall walk there. And the ransomed of the Lord shall return and come to Zion with songs and everlasting joy upon their heads. They shall obtain joy and gladness and sorrow and sin shall flee away. The prophet there is talking about reaching the destination that he calls Zion on the very last day. And he says it's only the redeemed of the lost that shall be there. Then he said no lion shall be there. The people that have hot, furious temper, they will not be there. The people that get angry, 
every time with the wife, with the children, with almost everybody around. They are very furious and they are fiery. It says they will not be there. The people that tear other people to pieces like a lion, whatever they see, whoever they see, they take that person up and tear him to pieces. It says they will not get to Zion. It said no ravenous uh, bees shall go up there on. That is those people that are wild and fierce in their look, in their attitude, in their language, in their disposition, they will not be there. You see somebody as the person is coming, the moment you look at him like this, it, it's like his facial appearance is telling you, get out of the way or else I tear you into pieces. All those people, they will not be in Zion. The people who can tear others to pieces with their language, with their tongue, with their gossiping, and their ravenous bees, they will tread upon other people and crush other people. They will not go to heaven. The people who can use their pen like a sword and with the writing of their pen they can destroy somebody's life. They will not get to heaven. Or the people that if they get into the vehicle because of 50 cobble, because of one naira or because of a four naira change they will remove their shirt and begin to fight and begin to tear one another's dress, they will not get to heaven. The people that make mark on the body of their husband, a little problem as a reason, instead of sitting down and saying, my husband, why is this like this? Why is this like that? Immediately, they rise up, they say, if you are going to kill me, you will kill me. They begin to use their teeth to bite their husband. Isn't that what animals do? They will never get to heaven. The husband that has a whip at home, he especially went to buy the whip, he said, my wife, look at that whip, I bought it for a particular reason. I will not take nonsense from you. Therefore, anytime you misbehave, and anytime there's a little discussion, the man runs to the behind the cupboard and he goes to take uh, that weave. He says, You see, I'm going to teach you a lesson. They will not get to heaven. I want to go to a lot of people who are not going to be able to do we're going to get to heaven there must be a complete change in our lives because the highway that leads to heaven is the highway of holiness no lion shall be there no lion must be shall be there. Only the redeemed of the Lord shall walk there. And some of the Lord shall return and come to Zion with songs and everlasting joy. You see, the, the people that will get to heaven, they are the people, even when there is a problem in the family, even when there is a little misunderstanding, all they can do is singing unto the Lord and rejoicing in the Lord. 
je awon ni awon ni na ni awon ti won si soro ba se wa nu ebi won wa ma korin ayo wa ma yin oruko olorun logo iru awon ni be ni won lo sorun when there is fire burning in the home these are the people they know the lord they love the lord all they will be doing is singing and rejoicing in the lord se ba da be ni pe ina tile jo ninu ile won mo oluwa won si me pe olorun le yan ju awo na won ma yo ninu olorun won si ma korin when there is misunderstanding between them and people in their zone or people in their district the people that are getting to heaven and not the people that are getting angry the people that are fighting the people that are retaliating they are people that in the midst of the problem in the midst of the misunderstanding they will be singing with everlasting joy awon to je pe bo tle je pe ede aye de tabi ai gbora eni ye ba wa laarin won ati awon elomo ya la ni eko won tabi ni agbegbe won iru awon eni be ki se awon ti yo ma binu ti won o ma ja sugba awon ti won yo ma yin oruko olorun logo but there are many people that are still walking like gentiles walk sugba awon opolopo lo si wa ti won rin keteri let's look at how the gentiles walk e je ki a wo bi awon keteri ti ma rin as a warning for us that if we're going to be in fellowship with the lord we shouldn't be like the gentiles ja ja bi ki lo fu wa pe ti a ba fe ni da po pelu olorun wa godo se bi awon keteri in ephesians chapter 4 nini we fe so ri keri reading from verse 17 lati ese keta de logun this i say therefore and testify in the lord that ye and spot walk not as other gentiles walk in the vanity of their mind in je eyin ni mo nwu ti mo si je ri ninu oluwa pe lati sisin yin lo ki e ki o ma se rin mo ani gege bi awon kefere ti rin ninu irunu asan won the gentiles before they get married they go and check up from an idol do not walk in the vanity of the gentiles awon kefere ko to se igbeyawo wa koko lo si aye o lodo di orisha mo se rin pe mo ni rin ni ona awon kefere the gentiles after bringing yam out of their farm they will not eat for us they will first of all sacrifice to idol do not walk in the vanity of the gentiles awon kefere nigba ti won ba kore isu ninu oko won mo e ko ko je sugba won ko ko fi ru bo fu orisha won na mo se rin ni ona awon kefere gentiles when they get their first salary they will take that salary. they will not spend the salary they will distribute the salary to old old people do not walk in the vanity of the gentiles awon kefere nigba ti won ba ko bere si ni sise ti won gba wo osu won e na nu owo na sugba won ko ko pe fun awon agbagba laarin idile won mo se rin ni ona awon kefere gentiles are the people people that when they when they dress they will put chalk or something that has a red color and put it all over their face like masquerade it says you shouldn't walk in the vanity of the gentile i want ke fe ni gba ti won ba mura won ko osun won ko efu iru awon eniyan be won ri ni ira won ke fe ri mo se ri ni ona won ke fe ri the gentiles are the people that whenever they dress and they are going to dance before their idol they do not dress fully in worshiping the idol they just put their wrapper on their chest do not walk in the vanity of the gentiles i want ke fe ni gba ti won ba fe si orisa won ti won ba fe joni waju re won e mura daada won kan ro so mo ya ni mo se ri ni ona won ke fe ri the gentiles are the people that were wearing the men they only have pants no singlet nothing at all then they have pants front around their wrist around their elbow and around their leg they are scantily dressed do not walk in the vanity of the gentiles i want ke fe ri ba tan kan lo ma wa ni di won wa mo riwe wa so mo oro owo wa so mo ikunpa wa so mo ese iru awon eniyan be ke fe ni won mo se ri ni ona won ke fe ri the gentiles are the people that whenever they are married they do not care the wife had a child last uh, year the wife is having another child this year already they have got 12 children and the man will say the man is just like a dog like an animal i cannot uh, rest i can't do anything even if the woman is dying she has already had many operations in delivering children the gentile will say i don't care just be having children until you die do not walk in the vanity of the gentile i want ke fe ni won gba ti ba ni yawo wa fe te ife ku fi ara won olorun bo ti le je pe iyawo bi mo olorun to koja wa fe ko bi mi le 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 lodun yi wa ti ni bi omo meji la sibe sibe wa te si waju lati ma se ife ku ke fe ife ku fe gege bi ti eranko iru awon eniyan be wa ni ki iyawo sa ma bi mo sha titi ti iyawo fi ba ku mo se ri ni ona won ke fe ri gentiles do not know between right and wrong between left and right if you are a christian you walk according to the word of god and not after the vanity of the gentiles i want to be ri won o ma to to yato sin ti o to won o mo to yato so si won ma rin ni si ro ba so won ti wo ba je ni gbagbo mo se ri ni ona won ke fe ri the gentiles are gluttonous the gentiles are drunkards you do not walk in that way i want to be ri je la je ki won si je o mo ti mo se ri ni ona won ke fe ri the gentiles are the people that after the days work in the evening they will put their chairs in front of their house 
and they will be talking about uncle, about cousin, about nephew, about mother, about father, about everybody, about president and governor. Gossiping is the business of the Gentiles. Do not walk in the vanity of the Gentiles. <laughs> It says in verse 19, having the understanding darkened, being alienated from the life of God through the ignorance that is in them because of the blindness of their heart, who being past feeling of giving themselves over unto lasciviousness to walk all uncleanness with greediness. But ye have not so learnt Christ. Do not walk the way of the Gentiles. Walk as you have learned from the Lord Jesus Christ. In Philippians chapter 3 verse 18. For many walk of whom I have told you often and now tell you even weeping that they are the enemies of the cross of Christ. There are some people that are so backsliding from the way of the Lord, they do not know the word of God or the cross of Christ. In many denominations, we find people that go by the name Christian, but during Christmas, they carry mass courage. In many denominations, we have people that are called pastors and bishops. They have their second wife and their third wives. In many places, we have the people they call evangelists. And yet they have their special juju man that will do juju for them before they go for crusade. In many churches we have people that carry Bible, the people that say they are Christians. Within that same church, they offend one another. They will be taking their names to Habalis, to Juju people, to kill one another in the church for them. But the apostles said they are the enemies of the cross of Christ. They are not walking in a straightforward manner. They are not walking in a way that will glorify the Lord. In 2 Peter chapter 3. 2 Peter chapter 3 from verse 3. Knowing this first that there shall come in the last days coffers walking in their own laws. You see, there are people that are like tires that Satan has sowed in the kingdom of God. They come to the church with their personal opinion. They come with their personal ideas. No matter what they hear from the word of God, their inner nature is still the nature of a scorner. They will hear the word of God on how a Christian should comport himself or herself, but they will be walking in their own laws. In verse 4, and saying, Where is the promise of his coming? For since the fathers fell asleep, all things continue as they were from the beginning of creation. They may hear about the second coming of Christ, but they will doubt. They will be scoffing. They will say, eh, that's how they have been saying. It will never come. Some of them, they 
<laughs> but the Lord is warning us not to go in the way of these Gentiles or these backsliders or these unbelievers. First John chapter 2 verse 11 but he that hated his brother is in darkness and walketh in darkness and knoweth not whither he goeth because the blindness has blinded his eyes what Jesus taught us before he left is that even our enemies, we should love them. What you find among people who say they are coming to church nowadays is that the people that are coming to church with them, they hate them. Brother, so and so is going to get married and he's in our zone. Can we go there and attend their marriage? Ah, don't mention his name before me. I have nothing to do with him. I'm just coming to the same church. But till we die, I will never have anything to do with him. You are walking in darkness. You will be stumbling. You will never be able to make heaven in that condition. Do you know, brother so and so? I just saw him last week. He has got a new vehicle now. Don't mention his name before me. I don't want to care if he buys a plane. I don't. I'm not his friend. I'm not his colleague. I'm just coming to church. I don't care for such people. He did something against me last year. I've never forgotten. I don't want you to mention his name before me. If he likes, he can buy 20 vehicles, buy aeroplane. That's not my concern. My friend, you are walking in darkness. You hate your brother. You cannot make heaven in that condition. Were you in the church last Thursday, sister so and so came to give a testimony. It was a challenging testimony. You know, she had not had any job before. The Lord bless her now. Who, who is that sister? Sister so and so. Which zone? Such and such. Don't, don't mention her in my front. I don't want to hear her name. She can get jobs, she can give testimony, but she did something against me five years ago. I've never forgotten to tell you the truth. I hate her. You will never make heaven in that condition. He that hated his brother is in darkness. Uh, did you hear that uh, so and so has become a zonal leader now? Uh, uh, I was in that area before and I know that man. That man is a hypocrite. He can deceive anybody. In fact, if you know what they did for me when I was in their area, that he can become pastor or bishop, that's not my concern. To tell you the truth, I hate him. I never want to hear his voice or his name. My friend, that is the way to hell fire. Sister after the church service wanted to greet you. Ah, sister, how are you? How are you? And then you are going. Oh, no. Ah, sister, I am greeting you. Ah, if you know your sister, go and greet you. I'm not your sister, you're here. Because I don't pretend. To tell you the truth, I hate you. If you know you have offended somebody, and you cannot come and apologize, and you are calling sister, sister, good afternoon, good evening. Don't greet me like that. I'm not a hypocrite like yourself. I don't like you. I hate you. You have other sisters, go and be greeting them. Look at my face properly. I'm not your sister. If you continue in that condition, you cannot make heaven. Eh, Arabiri, 
if we're going to make heaven, all this hatred and the work of Gentiles and the character and conduct of Gentiles must get away from our lives. What should be your inspired decision today? In Psalm 101, verse 2. Psalm 101, verse 2. I will behave myself wisely in a perfect way. When will thou come unto me? I will walk within mine house with a perfect heart. This is what the Lord is calling us to, my brothers and sisters, tonight. I will behave myself in a wise way, in a perfect way. I will walk within my house with a perfect heart. It is a perfect walk that God is calling us to. It is this decision that will until we see the Lord face to face, we will never deviate from the way of eternal life. That is what the Lord is calling us to. Of course, we need the grace of God to live right. We need strength from the Lord to live right. And the Lord is calling upon you that you will ask Him for grace and strength so that you will walk in a perfect way, you will walk with a perfect heart. Do not cover anything in your life up. Expose everything to the Lord. There is no little sin. There is no little mistake. The Lord is saying, walk before me and be thou perfect. The same Lord who helped the people that have gone before us is able to help us. He helped the people that were before us to live a perfect life and a holy life. He gave them the grace to live a blameless life. In Luke chapter 1 verse 6. In Luke chapter 1 verse 6. And they were both righteous before God, husband and wife. Walking in all the commandments and the ordinances of the Lord, blameless. You see, Zechariah and Elizabeth walked righteously before the Lord. Walking in all the commandments and the ordinances of the Lord without any blame. Which of the commandments of the Lord have you been brushing aside and you have not been walking in that commandment of the Lord? The same God that gave the grace and strength to Elizabeth and Zacharias is able to give you the grace. That you will walk righteously before God and you will walk in all the commandments of the Lord without any blame. Let's rise up on our feet and talk to the Lord in prayer. That the Lord will help us so that we do not walk as the Gentiles walk. Walk in the strength of the Lord, in grace of the Lord, we walk like Christ, and the Christian walk will be a preoccupation. You will desire to be holy, desire to be righteous before the Lord. And you will tell the Lord to give you the grace to walk before him and be perfect. You have hatred in your heart. Are you keeping malice with somebody? Are you like a wild animal and you are fighting? 
Lord, but you are you the one that other people are not able to fellowship with? Or are you walking in the sight of the Lord blameless and perfect? The Lord is calling upon you. He can give you the grace. I saw a relationship with your husband. Find your relationship with your wife. Find your relationship with fellow sisters in the church. Find your fellow brothers in the church. In your place of work. With your in-laws. Before the people around you. Before the Lord and be perfect. Can you say you are a Christian while you are keeping malice? Can you say you are a Christian when you are like a lion, wild animal? Can you say you are a Christian when you don't have the temper of Christ and the mind of Christ? Can you say you are born again when you do not love the believers? Can you say you are going to heaven when you are walking like the Gentiles? Walk before God and be thou perfect. Mary, do I do alone? Okay, sit there.